track out of a new album called Rambler, and uh, obviously if you've ever heard that sound before, you recognize it immediately as the guitar of Gabor Zabo, who is our in-person guest here on KBCA. Gabor has just recently gotten back from a uh, return visit, I guess, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, the first time for a long time in your homeland in Hungary. First time really, like ever, for that matter, because I, since I left in 1956, you know, i never been back, and this was the first time. What prompted so, you to go back? Well, I think curiosity in general, and it was just getting to a point that if I don't uh, do it this time, I will never do it. Just before communism took over in Hungary, I saw a Roy Rogers movie, and I saw him play the guitar. Since everything that was American became illegal, it made us somewhat of a fanatics towards anything that came from America. We resented Hungarian folk music and gypsy music because those were the only things that we were allowed to play. If I was lucky enough to get an album which was made in America on the black market, it would take me about four or five weeks' salary. Other musicians came up to my house and listened, and we made references to those albums like one would make to the Bible. a master guitarist, there's no question about that. And what's particularly interesting to me about Gabor is that instead of just trying to assimilate American jazz, he's incorporated into what he plays uh, a great deal that represents his own particular roots. You hear some of the Hungarian folk elements, and in addition to that, he's gone to other areas. He's, you obviously listen to Indian music. He's become uh, intrigued with the modal thing. And uh, more recently, he got into rock. I think he's a very wide open musician who uh, finds every kind of music uh, interesting and as a result uh, his own capacity for absorbing all these elements has produced something of lasting value. <laughs> jazz in itself was made so political. We really thought that uh, just by coming out here and uh, saying, friends, here we are, you know, we are jazz musicians, and we believe in the same things that you do. We thought we were going to be accepted with open arms. Now I know that they were more interested in the things that I had to say about Hungary and the revolution. To me, it meant this was my musical debut in the United States. Little did I know that nobody cared about Autumn Leaves when I played it. All they wanted to hear is, you know, how we were bleeding <laughs> on the streets of Budapest. <laughs> when I saw my mother and father taking the most underpaid jobs that existed, I think it really urged me on to try to become successful as well as remaining true to my original belief in music. Finally, I got a job with Chico Hamilton, black drummer. I really didn't know how to play. At the time, I was trying to copy the American players, and on the top of it, there was a bass player in the group who completely psyched me out. And actually, I started playing badly. 
So after three days, I was fired. About a year later, I got my job back with Chico. And this time, I wasn't trying to copy an American styles. And I was also not trying to stop the natural feelings that I may have had for my instrument. I've owned Memory Lane for 16 years. I've had just about every entertainment that's worth anything working here at one time, including Go Boy, naturally. He was with Chico Hamilton. Chico Hamilton came in with him and packed it in. He came back without him, and he couldn't hold the crowd without Go Boy. For soul, I don't think anybody any better than Go Boy. And only way after I completed this self-portrait, I realized that subconsciously maybe I was striving for something to express the great influence that the black music had on me. And all of a sudden we heard this guitar music coming from the lounge. There was hardly anyone there, but there was a guitarist who was playing incredibly. Then the leader introduced him and said he had just come from Hungary. So we went back again to hear him, and again, and eventually. Shoes. Walking shoes. Right. Uh, ooh, ooh, and Chico with those terrible bass drums. Uh, 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 okay. Slower anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's always easier for me to work with a piano player. On the guitar, I'm somewhat limited. But the piano is a perfect instrument, actually, for composing, because you can hear a sound that you imagine or you hear in your mind. And if a piano player is sensitive enough to know what I'm trying to do or what I'm all about, he can be of great help in composing. I was thinking about that. thing about Gabor is the space that he creates. Over the time of the tune, you're very free melodically to go just about any place you want. Sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's exciting, but when it gets right, it's as good as it ever gets. based on his self-image of himself, of somebody who carries the seed of European royalty in his blood, in his soul, in his bones. And you only run into that kind of thing when you run into those kind of people that are destined to walk in the spaces where the rest of us would look like idiots and fools if we walked there. You know, that harsh spotlight, the, you know, the little droplet at the end of the wave of people. Music always stays the same, no matter who comes and goes. Never mind about the unethical aspects of the situation. He still has the ability to draw people to him, including myself. He's just not adept politically, so things get loose, and pretty soon they're 
you know, there's too many personalities and too small of a space, and something's got to change. He's not able to become a leader like Willie Bobo or Miles Davis. Hey, no, when we get to letter B, I want it to be, but don't, 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 and really lay it on you. You know, you have no choice. With Gabor, you have nothing but choice. Like, he will judge you on what you come up with at letter, letter B. But he'll never tell you he's judged you. So if you're sensitive enough to know that you're being judged, that can be the, the worst possible situation. But playing with Gabor is worth the risk. Now, to start, to start off the tune. What I do is I look at you and I say this. of the group is very distracting because I have to spend my rehearsal time teaching the same old tunes to new musicians instead of working on some new material. It ends on somebody in your living room and you rehearse and they play the right notes they are even promising when it comes to feeling the music and then you get out in the front of audience and they freeze or they just simply don't have the experience of how to project your ideas under those conditions you have three gigs coming up, one in San Diego, one in Washington, D.C., and one in <laughs> Los Angeles. It's a great business. I'm exhausted. I'm really exhausted. I wish someday to arrive at a point when I can afford myself the luxury of putting the guitar away for about six months and have it just on the side as an instrument of pleasure and sacrifice about six months to painting and maybe I would finally pick up some of the facilities that I'm lacking. He's an introvert to begin with. He doesn't like to get deeply involved with people. I think because very light relationships are easier to handle. He hates to go on tour because he can't stand going from one hotel to the next. If he could, he would stay in this house for the rest of his life. It's unreal that he's even in the business. He would like to have a million dollars and set up all his musicians in luxury. Instead of having to be struggling artists, they would be able to at leisure play their music and create their music. It's a typical artistic idealism.
You weren't very enthusiastic with them today, were you? No. Uh, they don't dig in. I don't know. You know, there isn't that, uh, like, playing it, you know, like, you have to play that damn thing, you know, not just pussyfoot around. constantly changing his groups and yet he hates change. He's very idealist. Maybe that's why he's disappointed constantly. professionals together, you know, and they three times, you know. That's why, oh, I know what I was going to ask. They all want to do it, but they don't want to give up anything. We all know the hardships of the certain thing that we occupy ourselves with, and we don't wish it to our children. We all trying to avoid for them the mistakes and the hardships that we have to go through. I see an awful lot of talent in Blaze, and if he ever decides that music is the thing that he wants to do, I'll be all for it, and whatever is in my power, I will do for him, because he's my son, after all. But because I'm a musician, I'm somewhat prejudiced against him becoming one. mentioned something like I change groups more often than Raja Gabor changes husbands. I didn't realize it until then, but I guess I do. And the reason that happens, because oddly enough, what I'm looking for is really a permanency. I have this great enthusiasm about something very final that really gonna do the trick. And when I get into it and the idealism wears off and the practicality and the reality sneaks in, I get more and more disillusioned and then I look for some new energy source. Sometimes they are young people, sometimes they are undiscovered people, sometimes they are just the real pros.
do not get very close to people, even though on the surface I'm very capable of creating shallow relationships. But through music, I am able to give and open up to almost everyone who's there in the audience. I am able to give some love to a lot of people. And maybe that's how I compensate for my shortcomings as an individual. If I do that, the magic is missing from the music. As I'm playing, I have certain formulas in front of my eyes, dots and lines, somewhat like a medium in a spiritistic seance. Music exists, and you're just a lucky enough person to be able to sense it and communicate it. I guess we would all like to say that I did it my way and we are in complete control of our own lives. But when you go to bed at night, even you have your wife next to you, just before you fall asleep, you feel just how lonely you are. At times like that, you realize that no matter how many worldly relationships develop in your existence, on the long run, you are really on your own. And I think this is one of the reasons that I do believe that there is someone or something that takes care of all of us. Thank you. 